uh, I've gotten a couple questions about how to do what you see here, which is a thing called mixed model training. Um, so I'm gonna quickly walk through a demo of just how I went about making this. Um, you'll find it's actually pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward and it uses, it's basically a byproduct of, of transfer learning. Um, so we'll jump ahead and we'll just sort of start to make one of these. Uh, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a model that uh, is non-square. So don't be, sh don't be surprised by like the non-square attributes we're gonna use. Um, it's just an advanced level thing that I'll probably show a video for in the near future. Um, but yeah, let's get to it. So I'm gonna first just pause this. Um, I'm gonna come over to tra transmit. Um, so this is not in paper space. Uh, this is using a different server, but it's pretty much the exact same technique. Uh, there's a couple things you wanna do is you wanna really think about like the process you're going through and the workflow you're going through. So first thing you need to do is you need to find a model that you're gonna train on top of. So in this case, um, I'm gonna grab uh, this model and I'm just gonna train on top of this image. Um, I'm just gonna load a little bit slowly, but um, the thing that you have to remember is that uh, both your data sets have to be the exact same size um, in terms of shape. So if you're doing 1024, you need another 1024 model. So basically what you're gonna do is you're, uh, the process you're gonna train one model all the way through and then you're gonna start training another model. And we're just gonna look at the very early iterations and we're gonna get this mix where it's kind of a mix of both things. Um, so as an example, here's one of my floral training sets. We're gonna train off of this model um, and we're gonna take another little data set and we're gonna mess with it on top of it. Um, that other data set looks like this. Right, so it's got kind of this paint swirly effect. Uh, so we're gonna pull from a bunch of images on that. We're gonna um, transfer that on top of the flowers. So there's two things we need to do before we set that up. The first is that we need to uh, edit our run training command. Um, so this will require a uh, code editor. Um, I'm just gonna open this in uh, what I use, which is Sublime Text. So you wanna open the run training.py command. Uh, this might be a different line for some folks, but it's pretty much this. You wanna look at line 54. So uh, what this is, is this is train the image snapshot ticks. So if you ever noticed um, when you're training, you get more fake images than you do get pickle files. Uh, this is something you can change or set. So um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna leave snapshots at one and I'm gonna change the snapshot ticks, or sorry, the image snapshot ticks to one, the network snapshot ticks to one as well. Um, the reason we wanna do this is that uh, this mixed model happens really, really quickly. So you wanna be able to capture all of these potential options and you wanna get the pickle file from each of those as well. Um, so in some cases, if you're only getting a pickle file for every four fake images, uh, you're gonna miss some steps that you actually might wanna train from. So saying this to one and one means it's gonna make more pickle files, which means you wanna keep an eye on it and make sure that you're not um, overflowing your storage, uh, but you also will get better options uh, in, the, in the model training. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Um, when I do this through terminal, it like, or through transmit, it like automatically uploads it, so that's done there. Okay, the next thing we need to do is uh, we need to go into the same folder in StyleGAN2, and we need to go to uh, we need to go into training, um, and we want to open trainingloop.py. And uh, if you've seen my previous video on transfer learning, you'll know kind of what we're looking for. So we want to go down here to the resume pickle file. Um, I'm gonna comment out the latest and uh, turn this one back on. Now the way this works is you need to point it at a specific pickle file um, and you need to make sure that that is what it starts training from. So for transfer learning, you're basically starting from a model that's already trained and then you're transferring the new work on top of it. So in this case, I wanna come to results. Um, I wanted this guy, I wanted 516. So I'm gonna copy this path. So the way you do this in transmit is you hit command C and then you come back over here to uh, to sublime text and you just hit command V. So now I paste it in this path, right? So this path should look exactly like where this is located. I'm gonna hit save on this. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to connect to our uh, server. Um, I'm just gonna quit this command. Um, now the next thing we need to do is we basically need to run the exact same, uh, we just need to run a basic uh, style transfer command, or sorry, style GAN command. Um, and the way we do that in this is we just, uh, it's gonna be this. So um, this is run training.py, I've got four GPUs, and I'm pointing it at the new data set. So that new data set is W. Um, I've got a bunch of other things set here, which you probably don't need to worry about because this is sort of the advanced mode. But basically you wanna point this at 
the data set equals and point it at your new data set, right? So again, this is a floral image data set, but I'm transferring on top of it this new W, this paint flowy data set. And when I run this command, you should see here, after it runs a little bit, it'll tell you what, what file it's picking up from. So see right here, um, this pointed at the exact same file that I was told it to train from, right? So 516. Okay, so I've actually already trained this. I'm gonna show you what this looks like when you actually go into um, StyleGAN after a little while. So when you open this up, I'm just gonna start this by date. Uh, when you go in here, you'll see it picked up, it started at 516. Um, yours might start at zero. Uh, this was because of the latest thing that um, it was actually using this setting. Um, but I, I recommend manually setting it um, just because you know exactly what it's going to train from. So um, this is, so basically now we have a bunch of different images here. And if you see, like, you start at 516, this is what it looked like previously. It doesn't really look that different. And as you move up, you'll see, okay, we're getting a little bit more discoloration. You're getting a little bit more um, sort of mix of these pink colors. And as we go further up, now we're starting to get more of that, even more. So I'm starting to think about like, what's the actual level at which I want to uh, sort of train from, right? Or like, what do I want to actually use in my model? This one looks pretty interesting. This one looks pretty good. This one is getting a little bit less flower and more of that paint color. Um, this one's getting even closer. This one's actually starting to look almost entirely like paint. And if I open this one, this one almost looks entirely like paint, like, right? The flowers are almost completely gone at this point. So this is sort of, again, where it's up to the artist. You can sort of pick and choose. Um, and what's nice here is you'll see I got a pickle file for every uh, single fake. Again, because I made, because I changed that setting to one and one. Um, otherwise, you might get something where you would get this pickle and then you would get, uh, like, say, maybe, what is it? One, two, three. So in this case, it might have worked out for me. I might have gotten this one. But I wouldn't get another one until I wouldn't get another pickle file until here, uh, and this one's far too long, far too uh, along in its training process to actually be usable. So just make sure that I have a couple different options and I can actually train from different uh, positions. Um, so this is a really nice technique. What I'll probably do is then I'll pull down the pickle of the file I really want, and I'll do all the animation stuff I want from there. Um, so this is pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. If you let this run for really long, you'll actually just end up in a new place with a brand new image. Um, and this is basically what transfer learning is. Uh, so a lot of what we do is basically we transfer from FFHQ. Um, this is basically a byproduct of that, of that process. You get that sort of muddy in-between state where sometimes you get really interesting things. It's not exactly the same as transfer as style transfer, um, but it is pretty interesting and it's like a little different. Uh, what's nice about this is you could technically run this on CoLab. Um, this probably took, let's see, it took between this time and this time it took two hours, uh, a little over two hours. So you could do this on CoLab. And that's it, why I think you see a lot of this technique being done. Um, it's pretty easy to do this on CoLab without having to spin up a paper space server. Again, because you, know, you really only need um, four to five hours to be able to do this process uh, in something like CoLab, and that'll work fine without your server getting shut off. Uh, so that's it for this lesson. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Drop me a note in either YouTube or my Slack channel. Uh, and thanks for watching.